So good morning and welcome from a extremely sunny Glasgow. Um, welcome to the first Incusite webcast of the year. Um, today we're going to be talking about advances in live cell imaging and analysis for virus research. So a rather topical subject to begin the year with. Um, the main person leading the presentation will be Dr. Daria Davici. She is the Benelux Field Application Specialist and has a PhD in neuroendocrinology from the University of Nice. And today she'll be going through the following topics. She'll start off with a brief introduction on what is life cell imaging and analysis. So essentially an overview of the systems and the biological applications before really diving into some research generated data uh, from across Europe on viral infection titration, viral plaque formation, viral cytotoxicity, and viral infection in 3D cultures. Um, as always, please do feel free to stick as many questions as you like into the chat function. We have our Nordic field application specialist, uh, Dr. Andris um online to answer any questions. So uh, please do feel free to reach out to him um, using the chat function. If you would like a more detailed discussion with one of the FAS or technical sales specialists, there's also a function within the chat section to, to reach out and request a, a meeting with, uh, with one, of the, uh, one of the guys there. So with no further to do, um, Daria, it's entirely over to you. Right. Thank you very much, Darius, for the introduction. And thank you to those who are joining today's uh, webinar. Okay, so biology is something that happens in real time. However, uh, traditional methodologies often rely on single endpoint measurements. And these single endpoint measurements often don't represent the true kinetics of the assay. With uh, endpoint assays, you also miss out on um, these very important data points that happen in between. So therefore, going for more kinetic readouts basically allows you to then capture these very valuable data points that would otherwise be missed out on. And also, let's face it, no one wants to go to the lab at 2 a.m. to collect this very important data points. So our turnkey solution to kinetic research is the Incusite Live Cell Analysis System. So the Incusite system sits inside of the tissue culture incubator and it allows for automated image acquisition. And then all of these images that are then acquired can then be transformed into individual data points by using the very easy to use software. And this just gives a more dynamic insight into the health and morphology uh, and movements of your cells. So, the MQ site can image up to six 384 well plates in parallel, and this offers a high throughput in a live cell imaging context. But it also supports a large number of dishes and flasks. Then if we have a look at the cells inside of the MQ site, the plates actually remain to be stationary. And the only moving part is in fact the camera on the bottom, where it acquires images from location to location. The images are acquired in the HD phase channel and then in fluorescent channels. So here we've got three objectives. We've got the 4X, the 10X and the 20X. And this then allows users to perform um, imaging on a repeating basis in a user-defined schedule. And this then ultimately allows for the acquisition of these very difficult to obtain data points. So the Incusite is a very simple and easy to use platform. And where the Incusite really stands out in is the very intuitive guided software interface, allowing users to easily define a repeat schedule and perform subsequent automated analysis. So myself, I worked with the Incusite for a little bit over two years now. And I have to say that for me, it was very easy to learn the software. And now it's actually also very easy to teach it to new customers. So the Incusite supports a very large number of different types of applications. And some of these applications uh, mostly rely on the single, um, uh, on the um, very easy assay prep using a non-perturbing mix and read type of reagents to essentially label the cells and then to perform live cell fluorescent imaging. If we have a look at the hardware of the Incusite, 
we basically have two units here. We've got the gantry unit that sits inside of your tissue culture incubator. And this then utilizes the optimal environmental conditions um, to maintain optimal cell health. Then this gantry is connected to a controller and the controller is doing all the image processing. This controller can then be connected to a local network. And then all PCs connected to that same network can essentially um, connect to the incubate system remotely. So basically the only physical interaction that the user has with the machine is to set up the plates and then they can just simply walk away. So this essentially restricts the need to return to the lab to collect data, uh, especially when we're working in a BSL-3 lab environment. In addition to that, if um, you have a VPN connection, you could essentially connect to your incubate system from your home office. This way you can um, actually see how your cells are growing and also perform the analysis um, uh, from your home office. So this, especially in times of the pandemic where we want to um, uh, stick to social distancing is a very nice added feature of the Incusat platform. Then users can acquire images for as long as they like, and this can be in a matter of hours, can be days, and it can even be weeks. And then all of these images that are collected can then be automatically analyzed and processed using the very easy to use Incusite software. So this ultimately then allows you to quickly transform all of these images into tens and thousands of data points, as we can see here, which if you would do it manually, it would be really unmanageable to do. So just to give you a little bit of context of the importance of automation in a workflow, when imaging six 384 well plates using the Incusite system, um, every two hours, you will be able to collect 2,304 images. Take that in a 24 hour window, you'll be able to obtain 27,648 images. Now, if you were to do that using a manual approach, taking 30 seconds to capture an image per well, it would take you 9.6 days working nonstop to acquire the same amount of images. So this really shows the importance of throughput and the importance of automation in um, your workflow. So with regards to our Incusite portfolio, here we've got three systems. And these three systems, they all vary in terms of uh, complexity and high throughput. But the one thing that they all have in common is that they all use the same very easy to use guided interface, software interface. Right? So this can be useful for those who want to upgrade their system to a next variant. So at this moment, I'm not going to focus too much on these three systems. I'm going to save that for the end of this presentation, um, because now I want to change topics um, to talk about some of the key applications um, on the Inky sites. So essentially, the Incusite is a very flexible platform supporting a very large number of different types of applications. And this slide basically shows all the applications for which we've got validated protocols for. And even though that this slide doesn't mention virology, a large number of these assays do support virus-related research. Most of these actually rely on reporter gene expression. If you're interested in knowing more about some of these applications that are not covered during today's webinar, um, you can contact your local technical skills representative for more information. So using viruses that are tagged with a fluorescent reporter gene enables us to really visualize host virus interactions by quantifying viral infection and viral plaque formation. Then our Incusite reagent portfolio also allows, to study, also allows us to study the mechanism of infection through virus modulated cell death by quantifying cytotoxicity and autosis. And now also with the launch of our newest organoid module, we can use organoids that are grown and maintained in a matrigel dome, which offers a physiological relevant model to also study viral infectivity. 
So let me start by first introducing a selection of relevant applications that can be used for virus-related research. And the first is on cell counting. So on the Incusite system, there are multiple different ways to quantify proliferation. But by far the easiest approach is by performing um, a label-free confluency metric to quantify cell density. So with this approach, all that you have to do is uh, simply just plate your cells, treat your cells optionally, and then you can perform the live cell imaging. Then the images that are acquired here um, are shown in the HD phase channel. And these images can be used to further quantify the cell density by applying a phase mask. So this mask you can see on the bottom side is basically a pseudo color um, yellow that is covering your area of interest. And this is basically how the Incusite performs its um, analysis. So the data that we can get from this mask is essentially confluency in percentage. And confluency literally means the percentage of plastic that's covered by your area of interest. Then having this automated image acquisition at multiple time points, we can then very accurately draw these growth rate graphs to then, for example, assess the differences in growth upon different cell seeding densities, but also this approach can be very useful for those who are interested in quantifying lethal viral killing, for example, by looking at reverse proliferation. So in the next couple of slides, I will be presenting a couple of um, uh, slides containing some real data that were acquired at one of our Incusite customer sites. And um, these customers are all European customers. And the first data set that I will show here is coming from PharmaQ, um, that's a company that's located in Oslo in Norway. And researchers at PharmaQ have basically used the Incusite to uh, use the confluency mask to study viral infection titrations to assess the effect on cell density. So one of the key features that stands out in Incusite software is the vessel view which basically allows the users to quickly assess the images that are acquired in the whole vessel, which is in this case a 96 well plate showing the images in the HD phase plus the um, um, HD phase masking. So in this example, we can already see that an increasing number of viral particles is correlating to a reduction in the phase masking and therefore cell density. This is then also what we see when we look at the actual um, data that we were able to obtain with this masking. Then in another essay, researchers of PharmaQ have used fish cells to grow them into a confluence monolayer before infecting them with a virus. And this really shows the relevance of having automated image acquisition um, and also automated image analysis, because if you would have a look at the two videos here on the top hand side, it's very difficult by eye to actually see a difference between these two conditions. However, if you look at the mask on the bottom side, you do see that there is a difference um, of viral infection on cell density. And this difference is basically 10% in this uh, experiment, which seems like a very subtle difference, but it can have a major impact in this research as it gives more insights into this, um, into this essay that you otherwise miss uh, by just using your eye to assess the differences. Also here, um, you can basically see that there are some plaques that are forming um, in the image. And these can actually be quantified um, by taking the negative impression of this mask. So this is actually a benefit of the Incusite um, as we don't use proprietary file formats. So a widely used approach for determining the quantity of infectious virus is a plaque formation assay. So this really involves uh, growing a confluent monolayer of host cells that are then infected with the virus at varying dilutions. And then the plaque formations um, can then be seen, which can then be further quantified. So researchers from Virus Therapeutics, um, located in Austria, have performed a plaque formation assay using the Incusite system. 
And then what they did to quantify these plaques that were formed is they took the um, negative impression of these masks by exporting the images and the maskings. And then using image J, they did a negative impression to quantify essentially these plaques. So as I mentioned, since the Incusite does not work with preparatory file formats, um, you can basically export all your, um, your images to also uh, analyze them further using third-party softwares. So this just shows how flexible the Incusite system really is. Then another approach to measure proliferation is by performing quantitative cell counts by using a lentiviral approach to express a fluorescent reporter in the cell nucleus. So this is the same approach that's often actually also used in virus host interaction studies by using, for example, a GFP tagged virus, for example, to monitor virus infection in the host cells. However, in this example here, we are using the incusite nucleate red lentivirus to transduce cells to express RFP in the nucleus. These um, um, RFP labeled nuclei can then be further quantified in the incusite software. It's also possible to perform labeling in a more transient approach by using the nucleate rapid um, reagent. So essentially, what this then allows us to do is we can perform a quantitative cell count by segmenting each individual RFP-positive nuclei using the incusite basic analysis software. And this way, we can basically obtain the number of cell counts in an assay, which can be um, useful to uh, use as a readout, as a quantitative readout, when, for example, performing compound screens or antiviral compound screens, or um, when using um, virus infection or when performing virus infection assays using a tagged virus. So optimizing virus infection efficacy is also very important when conducting virus-related research. Therefore, it is common practice to utilize different MOIs to assess viral infection, as well as to assess replication and uh, virus host interactions. So this and ultimately um, the use of these fluorescently tagged viruses uh, basically enable for the quick and efi uh, efficient automated measurements of uh, infectious viral titers by quantifying the fluorescent signals in the host cells which in this case was uh, object counts, which relates to the um, uh, RFP um, nuclei that were um, quantified upon using nucleate red lentivirus in this example. So using this approach, um, the researchers of the Technical University of Munich have used the GFP tag virus to infect their um, host cells. So basically what they wanted to do is they wanted to quantify these viral infections and using a GFP reporter tag virus essentially allows us to really visualize these infections as they take place. So here we can see a nice increase in the GFP signal and then these GFP signals can actually be quantified further by applying an incusite mask in the green channel. So this offers a great advantage of um, having the, these kinetic readouts as well as having the kinetic measurements to the site. Using a similar approach, um, researchers of the SEC Institute in Barcelona in Spain, they were also interested in assessing the viral infection of GFP tagged viruses of two different viral strains. And what I really like about this, um, this graph here on the right hand side is um, like the relevance of kinetics, of having kinetic readouts, because imagine if this essay were to run for approximately a day and a half or two days, you would barely see a difference between these two strains. However, allowing the essay to run for a little bit longer, for four and a half days, the researchers were able to see that there is, in fact, a big difference between um, these two viral strains with regards to viral infection by using the green area of the infected um, host cells. So, 
So in this next example, um, researchers of this large pharmaceutical company in Europe, they use the GFP tag virus, um, and then they uh, use different MOIs of this virus to effectively see the differences in viral infectivity by using GFP as a readout here. So these four videos clearly show that there is a clear difference between um, these four MOIs that were used. If we look at the actual data here, when we look at the total green object area, we can see that there is a clear difference in these MLIs. And what's also very interesting to see here is when the virus actually reaches its plateau in terms of infectivity and when it actually reaches this plateau. Then eventually we start to see a decline in the total green area, which probably can relate to the uh, virus lethal killing of the host cells. Then in this next um, customer data set, uh, researchers of the Institute of Cavinillas in Valencia in Spain have used also a very similar approach um, to study viral infection of two different viral strains. They were able to distinguish these two viral strains by uh, labeling one uh, strain with m cherry and the other with GFP. Then on the Incusite system, they chose to scan using the whole well imaging mode, which essentially allows us to then capture the entire well of, in this case, 12 well um, vessel. So what this whole well imaging mode basically allows you to then do is uh, in this case, really see how the infection is basically spreading, which seems to be occurring like from the center um, that is then spreading towards the borders, which gives these very beautiful images that for me really resemble uh, fireworks. So the video here shows a more close up view of how the infection is taking place of this M cherry tagged and GFP tagged viral strains. And what's very interesting to see here is that there seems to be like a restriction in the area of infection that is taking place. And there seems to be little to almost no crossover into the host cells that are already infected with the other virus. So this video by itself already um, gives us a quite valuable insight of how viral infection is taking place. However, we can complement this video with the actual data. So here, the researchers, they use a fluency mask to essentially assess the uh, viral infection in, the, uh, in cell density, to see the differences in cell density. And then they also looked at the um, green signal and the red signal um, of these m cherry and GFP tagged viruses to see how um, the infection is taking place. So we've got both like very nice videos as well as the data to complement each other to basically um, yeah, answer the same question with regards to how viral infection is taking place. So by being able to use a virus that's tagged with a, a fluorescent reporter, we can also study plaque formations kinetically. So here, Researchers of virus therapeutics, again, they use the GFP tagged virus to essentially look at plaque formation as it's occurring in real time. So you can really nicely see in this video of how the virus infected cells are, well, lysing and are spreading the infection to adjacent cells, where then again, the infection to lysis cycle is heated. So rather than having a traditional plaque formation assay that relies on the single endpoint measurements. Here we can actually see the kinetics of how this uh, plaque formation is essentially occurring. Then another approach to measure perforation is by utilizing the cell by cell module to perform label free cell counts through individual cell segmentation. So here we're looking at four different HD face images with cells uh, having different types of morphologies. And then by utilizing the cell-by-cell -cell module to perform the analysis, um, you can then 
basically do um, individual cell segmentation. So the analysis here is basically shown in uh, blue. And then upon segmentation, we can obtain uh, not only the cell counts to assess proliferation, but we can also perform subpopulation analyses of these cells with different morphologies. So to study the mechanism of virus-induced cell killing of host cells, it can be beneficial to use a readout to quantify cell death, such as viruses. So in our reagent portfolio, we've got some very simple mix and read type of apoptosis reagents to basically allow you to perform measurements of kinetic apoptosis in real time. And in this slide, I'm going to show you how we can use the cell by cell module uh, to quantify apoptosis by not only performing a label free cell count, but then also to perform subpopulation analysis. So in this example, we've got some HG1080 cells that are some adherent cells that were transduced with nucleotide red lenti viral construct to express RFP in the nucleus. Then the cells were treated with a compound, chemtelicin, in the presence of a cas 7 sensitive dye in the green channel to measure um, apoptosis. Then after 30 hours, we can see that there is a clear difference between these two conditions. We can see there is a drop in the red um, signal and there is an increase in the green signal. Then we can use cell by cell to essentially segment each individual object here um, by solely using the HD phase channel. But then the real beauty comes when you can then next perform subpopulation analyses using the fluorescent intensities of each um, individually segmented object. We can do so by, uh, perform by generating these uh, dot plots. So these dot plots, they might seem very similar to you um, who are used to working with a flow cytometer. Um, but the advantage here of having these dot plots in the incusite system is that these dot plots are generated from images. So each individually segmented cell here is representing a dot in this um, dot plot. Another benefit here is that we can generate these dot plots at each individual um, time point of measurements that were acquired on the incusites. So then using the incusite software, so basically these two dot plots were acquired in the incusite software, we can then perform quadrant gating on these different subpopulations. So we can see that, for example, at 30 hours post-treatment, the red viable population has significantly dropped and uh, there is an increase in this red plus green quadrant that's equaling the cells that express RFP in the nucleus, as well as um, cas 7 green. And finally, when cells cease to express um, nucleide red um, and only show the cas 7 signal, we have our late apoptotic population on the top left corner. Upon performing quadrant gates, upon classifying our different subpopulations, we can then track these different subpopulations by generating these time course um, graphs, essentially. So you can see that um, approximately before 12 hours, the viable population slowly starts to decrease. Um, and then simultaneously, there is an increase in the early apoptotic population. And even later, we see an increase in the late apoptotic population. We can also specifically graph each individual subpopulation here from the different quadrants. And in this case, uh, we were able to see a concentration response to chemtelicin. So the cell by cell module um, is compatible with adherent cells, but also suspension cells can be analyzed as well. So in this next example, I'm going to show you again using the cell by cell module to um, effectively analyze these um, suspension cells, not here, not adherent cells, to then perform subpopulation analysis. So if you remember from my verse or from the first video that I presented, um, I mentioned that suspension cells can be, well, 
mentioned that placed in the inky sites, they remain to be stationary, so cells don't move around um, when acquiring the images. This is useful when you're interested in working with suspension cells, as then the cells are not moving too much in the wells. So, in this uh, video that I'm going to play next, um, I'm going to use the same example as the previous slide. Uh, but in this case, we're looking at Durkat cells, uh, that are suspension cells. They're transduced with the pledge reds, um, and they're being treated with come to these and in the presence of a caspase of seven sensitive dye in the green channel. Now, I want you to really focus on this um, uh, image on the right hand side, where you can see the different colored maskings that are representing the color of the map, that is representing the color of the quadrants um, from the dot plots. And then as cells slowly start to die, you will see that there is a shift in the dot plots towards the orange quadrants. And then you can see the red mass turn into orange. And then finally, um, we can see how the yellow mass is slowly turning into green as cells are undergoing late apoptosis. So cell by cell really just allows you to monitor really the kind the dynamic and kinetic changes in your cell culture by assessing the different subpopulations. So the benefit of, of the cell by cell module is to quantify, um, for example, in this case, viral infection on a per cell basis. So here, researchers at the Technical University of Munich have used cell by cell to basically perform or to quantify viral infection. So in this example, they use um, a virus that is tagged GFP to visualize the infection. And, and they use cell by cell to effectively segment each individual object using the HD phase channel. And then afterwards, they were able to perform subpopulation analysis. So here they set a specific threshold in the green channel. And here we can see that at time point zero hours, there are barely any cells or there are no cells infected with this gfp tag virus. So the histogram is located on the left, um, uh, is, is fo falling below this, this threshold. Then afterwards, as cells are becoming infected with this gfp tag virus, this histogram slowly shifts to the right-hand side as it exceeds this um, particular threshold. So it's cell by cell. We can not only obtain the total counts of our um, of our cells, but we can also look at the distribution of the two um, subpopulations, uh, which also gives us very valuable insights into um, the dynamics of viral infection. Then um, we can also use uh, or when virus-induced lethality basically doesn't take place using the classical apoptosis pathway, we can use cellular cytotoxicity to also measure our cell death. So on the incusites, or we have the incusite cytotox reagents available for customers who are interested in measuring cytotoxicity in their cells. So the cytotox reagents are membrane impermeable fluorescent dyes that um, are not able to enter the cells unless membrane integrity is lost. Then the cells um, in this case are uh, labeled green in the nucleus. So in this video here, we can see um, a multiplex assay basically uh, because here we're looking at cells, breast cancer cells, they're transduced with nuclide reds to express RFP in the nucleus. And then cytotox green was added to um, measure cytotoxicity upon chemical treatments. So by using multiple different um, readouts, we can essentially look at the same um, mechanism to complement each other, let's say. Uh, because here we can quantify these cytotox green signals by segmenting each cytotox green positive nucleus, and then um, we're able to obtain the counts of these cytotox green cells. Next to that, we've used the incusate nuclide red lentiviral construct, and this basically allows us to have another readout, which is more related to viability 
Um, and this way, we've got two different readouts, essentially, to um, study cytotoxicity. So using cytotox, researchers of the Institute of Cavinillas in Valencia, um, they were interested in actually measuring the differences um, in cytotoxicity upon using different MOIs of a viral strain. So what the video here on the right-hand side really nicely shows is the um, slow increase in the cytotox screen signal that's correlated to virus-induced um, killing of the host cells. Then, um, researchers have also used the Incusite system to basically look at the um, a virus induction of apoptosis in the host cells by using caspase B7. So here, customers of this large European pharmaceutical company have looked at different viral strains. We have tested different viral strains, and they wanted to measure its effect on um, confluency or cell density post-infection. And in that same condition, they added caspase B7 green to essentially measure um, apoptosis that's been induced upon viral infection. And they were able to see some differences um, with regards to apoptosis induction in the host cells, but also um, by simply look at, looking at the cell density as well. Then these same researchers, um, they further um, looked at one of these strains that they had selected, and they wanted to test different MOIs and see the effects of these different MOIs with regards to um, fluency, so the cell density essentially, and also caspase B7 activity. And this really nicely shows the clear difference uh, that we can see here uh, when using a lowered titer of the um, the virus with regards to um, effectivity in the host cells. So one of the emerging trends in virus research is related to the identification of factors to inhibit uh, viral infection. So researchers at the Technical University of Munich um, they were able to conduct a functional assay in which they pre-treated their host cells with a specific cytokine. And then they um, used a GFP tagged virus to infect the cells. Then what they saw in these two videos um, was that pre-treated cells with the specific cytokine were actually protected from being infected with this GFP tagged virus. The graph shown here on the right-hand side also shows the efficacy of inhibition using uh, different viral titers. So what this really nicely shows is that also like functional assays can be performed uh, that are related to virus work um, on the incusite system. So in uh, a similar approach but different readout, um, researchers from GSK vaccines in Belgium, they were interested, interested in identifying blocking antibodies that would inhibit viral infection from taking place in the host cells. So rather than looking at um, effectivity by using a fluorescently tagged virus, they used caspase 37 to quantify apoptosis in the host cells upon viral infection. And what we can very nicely see in these two videos here is that when utilizing these blocking antibodies, the um, apoptosis signal is significantly decreased, um, which essentially uh, shows that um, uh, the, the host cells are being protected from infection uh, and subsequent um, apoptosis in this very nice, again, functional assay. So in a different assay setup, um, researchers at GSK used the kinetic readouts of the inky sites to study the temporal expression of late expressing versus early expressing proteins by using two different viral strains um, using a uh, uh, genetically, uh, well, using two different um, um, GFP strains 
to look at the expression of these two different uh, proteins. So in a study that's focused on temporal expression of a protein, it's very important to collect a large number of readouts um, very frequently to not risk out on missing very, very uh, valuable data points. Because let's say if you don't have an NQ site and you were able to collect data points here, you would not see the differences in the temporal expression of these two proteins. So up until now, I've mainly talked about 2D assay setups. Um, but over the course of time, our development team has come up with specific scanning algorithms to also capture 3D structures such as organoids and spheroids on the inky sites. So the newest uh, module that was released is the organoid uh, culture QC module that utilizes a proprietary file, uh, image acquisition mode to assess different focal planes of organoids that are grown in uh, matrix elements. So this scanning mode also makes use of the bright field channel to give contrast to the organoids to improve um, consistent image acquisition and also um, to perform uh, accurate image analysis. So in these two videos here, you can see two different organoids grown in um, uh, matrigel domes and the yellow borders that are surrounding the organoid structures. It's very nicely showing how accurate the incutite mask is to segment the organoids in different image planes. This then ultimately allows users to effectively assess organoid health by measuring the bright field area, the number of the organoids, as well as the darkness of the organoids and the shape, all without actually having to label the, um, the cells. So using this approach, uh, researchers of the University of Surrey have used um, organoids grown in matrigel domes to use that um, as a more physiologically relevant model to assess viral infection. And here what they've done is they added the virus into the matrigel and then they've grown the um, organoids. And in another condition, they added the virus uh, to the media. They wanted to see if there would be a difference with regards to organoid health when um, affecting the organoids in different uh, uh, approaches. So by eye, at least to me, it's quite difficult to really see a difference in these three conditions. However, then when applying the organoid masking, when you actually look at the data that's been acquired from this mask, we do see that there is in fact a difference between these three conditions. So here, it seems that the virus in the matrix gel seems to be more effective at infectivity by simply just using the organoids um, object area as a readout for organoid viability. So another approach. Um, so the incusite also supports spirit assays, which is somewhat similar to um, imaging organoids, but is using a different assay setup and different image position. So in this approach, flat bottom plates are coated with matrix gel layer prior to seeding tumor cells to then allow them to grow into tumor spheroids. Then the scan type here utilizes the bright field channel for more consistent image acquisition. So researchers at the uh, University of Surrey, they use mouse-induced tumors from the stomach and they've grown it on flat bottom plates coated with matrix gel. And in this essay, they use a GFP tag virus to affect their tumor steroids. And they've also added cytotox spreads to essentially um, measure cytotoxicity upon viral infection. So the real benefit of being able to capture 3D structures like organoids and spheroids um, on the EQ site, um, it ultimately allows users to be able to use also like physiologically relevant models to also study viral infection and host virus um, mechanisms. So 
This brings me to the uh, summary slide, which outlines all the different topics that we covered during today's webinar related to virus research, using different types of approaches to study the kinetics of virus-host interactions and even functional studies in real time. And most of these data that were presented were actually coming from Incusite's um, customers, from researchers, um, and all data was acquired using the Incusite's live cell analysis system, of which we have three different uh, instruments to choose from in our portfolio. So the first is the Incusite SX1, which is um, also our entry level system for live cell analysis, which uses the same very easy to use uh, software that allows for a robust application suite. We've got three objectives that sit on a single position use. And here we can image up to two microplates in parallel, which offers more serial workflow. An upgrade to this system is the Incusite S3. So the Incusite S3 is a step up in terms of throughput because we can image up to six uh, plates in parallel. And it also allows for multi-user support using user-defined schedules. Um, because here also the objectives to sit on an automated turret. Then the Incusite SX5 is our latest release. And the Incusite SX5 has the same throughput as the S3. We've got six plates here, but offers more complexity as we can um, use more fluorescent channels. So this system can support up to five different fluorescent channels, up to three simultaneously. So this is our most like advanced um, offering with these user swappable um, optical modules to use different fluorescent channels. So also, um, just to say, a large number of the data that was presented during today's webcast were obtained using the Incusite's basic analysis software. But for a few number of assays, we use the specific software modules on the Incusite. So we've got the cell based cell module, the spirit module, and the organoid module. So for those with an Incusite system that are interested in trying out one of these software modules, you can contact your local technical sales representative to request a 30 day trial period. Also, for some of these assays, um, uh, researchers have used the Incusat reagent to uh, study virus-related research. And uh, we actually have more reagents uh, in our portfolio. And you can find more information um, about these reagents on our SF Bioscience website. And um, if you access our eShop, uh, we currently have a promotion uh, ongoing, uh, which is buy three, get one free. So, you can find all that information on our websites. And with that, um, I'd like to thank you all for joining today's webinar. Um, and I'm happy to take any questions in from the chat box. Thank you very much, David, for that really, really nice presentation. Um, th there's a couple of questions in the chat box, but um, I guess we'll just start off with, uh, with one, the first one we had today. Is it possible to measure and quantify plaque size? And how would you do this? Um, yes, it is possible to do that. So for that approach, you would take the uh, confluency mask from the NQ site, um, and then you can export that mask and um, uh, do further analysis on, for example, image J. And then on image J, you're able to obtain the counts. And I believe that you should also be able to get the um, area or like the average areas um, using uh, image J macros, for example. So you can do it on the Inky site itself, but you can do it by exporting the masks. Yeah. Fantastic. And uh, we'll, we'll just go for one final question. Um, mm -hmm. This is a question from Gabriella. Um, I see several images that nuclei are stained with either lentiviruses or cells which have some modification to, to the nucleus staining. Um, is this needed for such systems to, to image the cells? So you don't have to use labels, like you don't need to work with cells um, that are transfused with, uh, with a viral construct. Uh, we can do, we can, for example, we can quantify cell density by simply just using um, 
are by image cells in the HG phase channel. And without having to use a label, you can already obtain the confluency mask, for example. But if you really want to obtain a cell count, um, you can use a lengthy barrel construct to express something in the nucleus. But also you can just use the cell by cell module uh, because the cell by cell module allows for a label free um, measurement if you're looking into uh, measuring proliferation. So, no, you don't need to use fluorescent labels. That's fantastic. So we will leave the webinar running for the next couple of minutes. If anybody has any further mm -hmm. questions, please don't hesitate to put them into the chat or the question box. Uh, we'll have one of our FAS technical specialists um, reach out to you with the answer. Um, alternatively, please do send me an email and we'll distribute it amongst the team accordingly. So I would just like to take this opportunity to thank everybody for attending and uh, yeah, have a great day and uh, a great week. Thank you very much.